The Big Ten has the most lucrative TV deal in all of college sports. How much better is it than everybody? Well, it's so good that maybe even the ACC can afford to send some teams over and join the Big Ten as part of future expansion again. I'll explain. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Thank you for making us a part of your first listen each and every day. We really appreciate you everydayers out there. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's podcast, we're going to look at the conferences and their TV deals, side-by-side comparisons, plus the latest training camp news you'll want to know, and our pigskin picks and prop bets as the season is getting closer. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. The Big Ten is everywhere. Everywhere. CBS. Fox, NBC, Big Ten Network, streaming on Peacock. It is all part of this massive seven-year, $7 billion deal, which can actually eke up closer to $8 billion once you add Washington and Oregon. We'll get into that later. But uh, this is part of the new football deal for Fox, CBS, NBC, and Peacock. And again, this is just football money. The Big Ten just distributed uh, almost 60 million dollars to each school they make a big payment like that at the end of each year to every school in the conference and most of this comes from the football tv money the rest of it comes from big 10 ad revenue from the big 10 network uh, bowl games the ncaa tournament uh, from the basketball tv money that's a separate deal ticket sales from conference championships. Anyway, they put it all in a big pot and they divide it up among all the schools. And every year it goes up more and more. And this past year, all the Big Ten schools got just about $60 million. I think it was 58.8 or $59 million. So all is good. And everybody else takes notice. It's kind of the gold standard. Even when you look at the other conferences, even the powerful SEC can't match that. Now, the Big Ten's not done. There are some people, experts, they think that here in the very near future, that annual payment to each of the Big Ten schools with all this, this media deal and all the money they're raking again could be as high as 80 to $100 million per year per school. Think about that. Just think about that number because we're going to keep coming back to it. 80 to $100 million per school per year. It's, it's unfathomable. So how does this compare to other conference deals? Well, let's look at the SEC. They're the next strongest conference out there financially. Their current deal with CBS expires after this season. And then the SEC, they signed up with Disney, all the ESPN and ABC products. It's a, it's a lesser deal. It's a longer deal for less money. Ten years, $3 billion. Remember, the Big Ten is seven years, $7 billion. SEC, 10 years, $3 billion. And that deal starts in 2024. And that will make up a large part of the payments they make to their schools. And it is estimated that SEC schools will each get $70 million a year. Now, far less than what the Big Ten is doing. But keep these numbers in mind. The Big 12, for example, their new deal with ESPN and Fox doesn't kick in until 2025. But ultimately, its conference schools will get about $45 million a year. The Pac-12 schools, they were getting about $20 million a year. They wanted more. They got nothing. That's why they don't exist anymore, basically. So they have big problems. Now, there's then, then there's the ACC. Let's talk about the ACC for a minute. Their schools, because they're very unique, and they're in a bad spot. Their school signed a media grant of rights deal seven years ago. It was a 20-year deal that they're locked into. They got 13 more years left on it. 
for just $3.6 billion. I mean, that's really jump change by comparison to what the other conferences are getting. So each ACC school gets an annual payout of about $30 million right now. And again, with everybody else skyrocketing, they're locked into that $30 million every year for the next 13 years. They can't survive doing that. Everybody's going to pass them by. So football powerhouses like Florida State and Clemson, they look over and they see some lower-tier football schools in the Big Ten like Northwestern and Indiana and Rutgers projected to get $100 million a year. Meanwhile, they're stuck at $30 million a year to the end of this contract for 13 more years. It is too huge of a gap to ignore. But there's a couple of more problems for ACC schools. They just can't just leave. That contract they have is pretty airtight. Now, the first thing on the contract, if they do leave the ACC, let's say Florida State leaves, and they've been talking publicly that they, they have to. they they got to do something. They will have to pay a $120 million exit fee up front, stroke a check, here you go, see you later, we're out of here. $120 million bucks. That's a big gap. Florida State has announced publicly, mind you, that they're looking into raising that $120 million, either from boosters or an equity firm, so they can just stroke the check, write the fee, and get out of the conference. But that's not all. Even if they write the check for $120 million to break the contract, there's another problem. Their media contract says if they leave the ACC, ESPN and the ACC will still own their financial broadcast rights to their home games for the next 13 years. So just to kind of put that into perspective, that's about another $400 million that they would still owe. Whatever they earned outside, they would still owe it to the ACC. So if Florida State got uh, money elsewhere, they still have to pay four hundred you know, thirty million million a year for the 13 years, about $400 million bucks, uh, because that's what their deal says. The ACC and their grant of rights deal, they, they own that money. And uh, ESPN and that whole deal is pretty airtight. So Florida State President Richard McCullough says that that gap, though, between what the ACC schools are getting and Big Ten and the SEC schools are getting, it, it's not sustain sustainable. Those are his words. And he wants a 12-month exit plan on his desk ASAP to get out of the ACC. So here's what I think he's going to do. I think there are two options, and hang tight for option two because it's staggering, but I think that's the one to go with. Option one, there might be a little loophole here. It's believed, it's believed that if eight ACC schools can come together, they can, they can blow off the contract. If eight agree they want out, they'll all have to be let out. Word on the street is seven have already agreed to that, that they want out. And they openly explore their options of getting out of this horrible deal. They are Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Miami, Virginia, and Virginia Tech. So they need one more school to join them. Would you think they could sit around and collect some money and pay off another school to join them? Literally a bribe. Could they do it? Maybe. But here's the other problem. Um, if a bunch or all of the ACC schools decide to bolt, there's no guarantee that every one of them will find a landing spot. You know, the Big 12 says it's not expanding anymore. The, the SEC is not showing its cards. Maybe they only take one or two. Maybe they take none. Maybe the Big 10 only takes two schools to get to 20. What are these other schools? Where do they go? I think they're scared of that. They need to have a home. They need to have a conference. They need to have a, a, a TV deal of some sort. Even a bad one is better than none. Just look at the Pac-12, right? Or the Pac-4 or whatever we're calling it today. So that's a big problem there. Uh, maybe, maybe a few ACC schools leave, and then the ones that stay behind can cobble together some smaller schools to join them, perhaps. And they can make their less desirable, but it's better than nothing. Maybe they could cobble together a conference and keep it together and keep their $30 million a year intact from ESPN and the ACC, maybe. Or maybe they'll have to renegotiate for a lower figure. Who knows? That's why I was a little bit surprised when they didn't add Cal or Stanford last week when everybody met. Now, we were originally led to believe that it wasn't close. Nobody wanted uh, Cal or Stanford. They really weren't interested in taking a vote. Well, they took a vote, all right. And I guess all but four teams 
wanted to bring Cal and Stanford into the ACC for this very reason, to protect themselves, to keep their numbers large in case some schools decided to leave. Turns out the four schools that voted against it were Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and North Carolina State, the four teams that have the most to gain by leaving the ACC. Had one more school voted for it, Cal and Stanford would be announcing the day that they'd be in the ACC. West Coast playing in a conference literally named after the Atlantic Ocean. Go all the way across the country. Now, all that's fine and good. It's all possible. Maybe it won't happen. I'm going to lay option two on you. And this is the big one. You ready for this? Let's say Florida State or Clemson decide they're out. They can't compete by remaining in the ACC. They get their boosters and their equity firms to pony up the $120 million exit fee. And say, all right, everybody, we're out. And then they join, for example, the Big Ten. Now, I just told you to remember the number I threw out. The Big Ten teams could be getting, they're going to get $90 million a year. So Florida State and Clemson, they could join the Big Ten collect their $90 million a year, pay off the $30 million a year that they still owe the ACC every year, and they're still coming out ahead $60 million a year because the numbers are so huge. That's double what they were getting. That's almost what the SEC pays its football schools, and it's significantly more than what the Big 12 schools are getting, and it might be something that they really consider. Just write the checks, pay the fees, pay the dues, collect the bigger money from the Big Ten, and roll on. What do you think about that? We'd love to hear from you on Twitter at Talk Big Ten. Uh, you can also make your comments here on YouTube as well. Love to hear from you on all of that. We're going to check in with a couple of uh, uh, Big Ten camps, and also ESPN released its top 100 players. going to tell you how many Big Ten players are in the top 20 there. We will do all of that. And then later on, our picks get picks. I got some prop bets for you on some Big Ten players. It's all coming up right here on Locked On Big Ten. But I want to tell you about this first. A championship team is all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. You know, whether you're trying to make a perfect fit with your teams in your conference or your players on your team. It's the same thing when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right first time around. Just add, uh, add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that your part will fit or your money back. It's that simple. Because just like in sports, com Confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. All right? Get the right parts, the right fit, the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So I just dropped a lot of business stuff, a lot of numbers on you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to ease off that just a little bit here. Uh, I do want to give you a little refresher course on all the TV things going on with the Big Ten. The uh, season is right around the corner, of course. So CBS is going to carry seven Big Ten games this year on uh, Saturday. Uh, remember, they still have to split time with the SEC, and this is the last year that they're tied with the SEC, so they got to kind of split it. Only seven games on CBS. Fox will carry 24 to 27 Big Ten games, and they continue business as usual there. NBC will carry 16 games at either 3.30 or prime time. Some weekends they'll have double headers as well, and they'll also have to juggle their Notre Dame commitment on NBC for a couple more years. And then Peacock Streaming is new this year with eight games that they'll be carrying. The Big Ten Network will carry a huge load of 38 to 41 games like they always do. ESPN will not be carrying any Big Ten games again anymore uh, unless a Big Ten team or teams are in the college football playoffs. So to oversimplify your Saturday Big Ten schedule, Outside uh, of the Big Ten Network or streaming on Peacock, think of Saturdays almost like an NFL-style triple header and, and slots and windows. You'll have the noon games will be on Fox, the 3.30 games, C CBS, and 7.30 primetime on NBC. So there you have it. Simplified it. You're welcome. 
By the way, the Big Ten Championship will be on CBS on uh, 2024 and 2028, NBC on 2026. And then Fox will fill in the gaps every other year, the, the odd number years, 2023, 2025, 2027, and so on. So that's how that all stacks up. Now, quick couple notes from camp. Buckeyes camp, uh, Lorenzo Styles and David Adolph. They uh, had their black stripes removed from uh, their helmets, so that's a, a growing up rite of passage over there. Still no announcement at starting quarterback for the Buckeyes. All right, ESPN just put out its list of the top 100 college football players. You know, the NFL Network does it every year. They pull the players, and then they release it in August when camps are going. ESPN did the same thing with college football players. And I'm not going to read them all to you. It's 100. But I will highlight the top 20 in which uh, Big Ten players were prominent. Uh, first of all, number one on the list, no big surprise, was USC quarterback Caleb Williams. He's number one, future Big Ten team. But uh, anyway, he's number one, Heisman Trophy winner. The highest-ranking Big Ten player on the list was Buckeyes wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. He came in at number three. Michigan running back Blake Corum came in at number seven, and another Buckeyes wide receiver, uh, Emeka Agbuka, came in at number 13. Penn State offensive lineman Olu Fashanu came in at 16. He didn't give up any sacks last year. At number 17, Michigan running back Donovan Edwards, and at number 19, Michigan offensive lineman Zach Zinter. So kind of boiling this down, how it really jumps out is – Michigan has an offensive lineman, two running backs, and, of course, Jim Harbaugh says they have a generational quarterback. All those guys, other than the quarterback, uh, those other guys, they're in the top 20. Ohio State has two wide receivers in the top 13 players in the entire country. So between those two, they have some serious weapons. Try stopping those guys. Uh, as always, i like to thank you guys for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day. And you every day is our next show. We're going to have, again, more of the latest from training camps around the league and any breaking news that goes on. Plus, be on the lookout for our Lockdown Big Ten roundtable with other Lockdown hosts coming up. That release date is getting closer. It's called the Ultimate College Football Preview on Lockdown Big Ten. And again, when that date is available, I will let you know. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe. We're keeping that push going to 3,000. We're getting closer. You guys are going to help us do that by the time the season starts for sure. Share, follow, and like Locked On Big Ten. Coming up, our next weekly feature, uh, we're going to do pigskin picks. And as you know, on Fridays going into the season, we'll have the picks of the games in the Big Ten. No games yet. We're getting close. But I found a couple of very interesting prop bets to share with you. Um based on uh, the numbers given by FanDuel, our good friends there. We'll have all that. I'll share it with you. That's next right here on Locked On Big Ten. All right, pick skin picks going into what, about uh, getting close, getting close to the season. I have picked out some prop bets of some Big Ten players that I think is uh, pretty interesting. I will share with you and give you my thoughts. I'm going to put them on screen. For those of you listening on audio, they're up on the screen, but I'll describe them in detail. And here they are. Um, regular season touchdown passes. I've got both Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy and Penn State quarterback Drew Aller on the screen. J.J. McCarthy, uh, Vegas and FanDuel, they have the uh, over-under on touchdown passes at 20 and a half. And uh, the over, just a little bit of juice, minus 106, the under at minus 120. Now, he threw 22 touchdown passes last year. I think take the over on that, although the risky part here is Michigan is going to run the ball a lot with their dynamic backfield. They'll probably be ahead in a lot of games, and so maybe that's the dangerous part of uh, taking the over on a number. Maybe not as many touchdown passes, but I think he'll get over uh, he, at least as many as he threw last year at 22. They have it at 20 and a half, so I'll take the over there. Drew Aller is a different story at Penn State. This is his first year of uh, starting a, a full season. At least that's the plan. The over-under is 22 and a half touchdowns, uh, minus 112 for over and under. I would also favor the over, but also like Michigan, Penn State will have a remarkable one-two running back combo behind him. 
Well, they, again, will run the ball a lot and have a lot of leads and maybe not need to throw as much. So be cautious on taking the overs with those two. Meanwhile, regular season passing yards, again, comparing J.J. McCarthy and Drew Aller just for fun. They have um, the numbers set for J.J. McCarthy at 2,600 and a half yards. The over or under, um, again, minus 112 on both. He threw for 2,700 last year. So, so Vegas thinks he's going to throw for a little less again, because of the running game they have, that's the risk. I think he gets a little closer to 3000 yards this year. I would take the over cautiously Penn state uh, drew Aller 2,725 and a half yards. The over under at minus minus one twelve on both same thing, a lot of reliance on the running game, but they'll probably throw quite a bit. And uh, I, I, I would cautiously take the over on that. All right, now on the screen, we're going to look at uh, regular season rushing touchdowns. We've got Michigan running back Blake Corum, Penn State running back Nick Singleton, and Ohio State running back Travion Henderson on the board. The number for Corum is 11 and a half. You see the over-under numbers, minus 118 for the over, minus 108 for the under. He had um, – how many touchdowns did he have last year? I think he had, he had 18. 18 rushing touchdowns and they're set and he missed a couple games too, by the way. And they have it at, um, they have this one at 11 and a half. Take the over run to the bank and take the over on that. He's going to crush that number this year. Penn state, Nick Singleton. They have him at 10 and a half touchdowns this year over minus 124 under minus 104. Um, he had 12 touchdowns as a freshman last year. Again, he's going to be a big point of this offense. I would take the over on this one. And then Travion uh, Henderson, 11 and a half touchdowns. Um, plus money here. They're over plus 102 and the under minus 130. So this, now he, um, in 2021 was his big year where he had 15 touchdowns. Um, but this is kind of the opposite of the Michigan situation. They've got two outstanding receivers. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot, but maybe they have the lead. They run the ball. I don't know. I, that's a, that's a cautious number right there. 11 and a half. That seems to be about right. Take your pick on that one. Meanwhile, um, regular season rushing yards, Blake Corum, Nick Singleton and Travion Henderson. Once again, they have quorum set at 1,050 and a half. The over and under are both minus 112. Uh, yeah, he'll get over a thousand yards um, again. Uh, again, last year he um, he got over that number pretty easily. As a matter of fact, I think it was almost 1,500 yards. It was 4 1,463. And again, he he missed two games. So, and these are regular season numbers. I think he flies past that number. Take the over. Run to the bank. Um, Penn State running back, Nick Singleton, 975 and a half yards. He got over 1,000 last year as a freshman. But, again, he's got a, um, another running back back there that splits a lot of time that got 700 yards himself. I think he does eke out 1,000 yards, but it's going to be close. And then Ohio State running back, uh, Travion Henderson, right at 1,000 yards, 1,000 and a half. And his over-under at minus 112 on both. He, again, two years ago, rushed for 1,248. He's certainly capable of doing it. Mm, I would I would lean to uh, a little bit over as well. A lot of overs on my opinion this year. I think there's some value here that you could check out. So that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at with our pigskin picks on these prop bets here. And again, once the games start, we'll start doing money line picks for Big Ten games uh, very shortly. Coming up in the near future. Thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day. You Every day is our next show. We'll have all the latest from Big Ten camps. And again, everybody, be on the lookout for our Locked On Big Ten Roundtable podcast with other Locked On podcasters soon. In the meantime, I'll hear from you on uh, Twitter, if you don't mind, at Talk Big Ten or comments down below. Uh, those of you checking us out on YouTube, I was going through those again earlier today. I'd like to answer all of those. Be sure to subscribe. Let's get us to over 3,000. And follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it is available each and every morning when we release it. Now I invite you to check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast for the latest on everything else going on in sports. 
want you to have a great day. I give you my thanks again for checking us out here today. I can't wait to talk to you next time. I'm Craig Sheeman for Locked On Big Ten.